Brian Powell of Iron Far here with Mike Aish uh, of New Zealand. Now, now you're a US citizen, right? Yeah, no, I've had my citizenship for uh, like two or three years now. Yeah. Um, you're, you're probably the first uh, person to run Leadville who has run in uh, an Olympics. Or make that two Olympics. Was it 04 and 08 that you... Uh, no, actually uh, 2000. 2000? 2000, 2004. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I, a few things went on. I didn't get selected far away. But yeah. So in the 5K the first time around and the 10K the second, or what was the... Actually, uh, other way. Uh, 10,000 first and then 5,000. That's an interesting yeah. progression. Yeah, it's well... Not traditional. I was kind of... Uh, I don't know. I, I, the the 10,000 came naturally, but I didn't really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, the 5,000 was much more fun, but I just didn't have the talent for it. So, I, you know, there's a crazy mix there. So maybe if there was like an 8,000 meter in the Olympics, you Well, yeah, maybe. <laughs> you never know. Um, yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, but you have, you know, you've run super fast, I mean, obviously, Olympic level on the track, and then uh, you've run 213 for the marathon, correct? Or yeah, no, I did, but that was a long time ago. Yeah. You know, a long, long time ago. And I think, you know, like people are definitely, uh, you know, they're probably missing the point if they bring that stuff up because, you know, like I, I retired too, forgetting that, and I stopped running for a, a, did you? a good amount of time. So, you know, you don't hear about them saying I'm going to do well because I'm skateboarding very well. But, you know, it's, it's, it's it, I'm, I'm a different runner than I was then. Um, you know, I've got a whole different perspective, and, you know, I'm doing it for totally different reasons. Yeah. So, what, uh, when you stopped running, you know, super competitively, the elite level, how long did you take off from that, from running, or you know, from you know, really training? Well, after that was probably 2009, mm -hmm. and then um, I kind of uh, I ran world champs and didn't really run that well at all, and I was just really kind of like, it's enough. Um, and then I uh, I basically kind of tooled around a bit, but I wasn't really there was no structured training. Mm -hmm. You know, if I had time, I'd go for a run. And, you know, I was trying to put things together and. Um, you know, I ran a few local races, stuff that I wanted to do, but had never really kind of got time to do. Um, and they were fun, but you know, there was really never any intent to go out there and just like you know, tear it up. It was just go out and compete and have fun. Um, then uh, probably end of last year and the first probably five or six months of this year, um, I didn't run at all. Um, I was working a lot and it was just getting too much to try and balance it out. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, yeah, I was doing a lot more skateboarding. <laughs> much more fun, much more fun. Um, but yeah, like, uh, yeah, it was probably, it was actually 10 weeks to tomorrow um, that I was like, okay, um, you know, Leadville's on my bucket list. I was walking my dogs and I was up in the trees and I was like, you know, let's see if I can get it. And um, I thought, you know, I've just got enough time if I get some running in and uh, it would go really well. You know, um, I got into the race, then I, I got into the 50 and, um, you know, I made a few mistakes but learned a lot from the 50 and um, who knows you know tomorrow is going to be a, a whole new chapter we'll see. yeah I mean what did you learn in your first it was your first ultra I'm assuming your first run over the marathon distance right yeah no it was um, I I basically went into it hoping to run with the leaders and just watch what they did mm -hmm. you know see how they took in their, their fuel see how the paces things like that and um, you know after about five or six miles the guys basically told me that it was all their first one as well. So I was kind of like, I didn't know what to do. Um, so we just started running and we got to like some hills and I ended up being a little bit in front, but it wasn't because I was pushing, it was just because it felt more comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, this other guy caught up to me, you know, 15, 20 miles later and he was a good downhill runner and I'm probably terrible at that. Um, but I like running the ups. He was pretty much, you know, it didn't seem like that was his favorite part of the race. Um, so, you know, we kept kind of passing like this and I'd catch up to talk to him and then in the middle of the conversation he'd take off again. You know, that, that's the way that he raced. Um, but, you know, like, I just got too kind of like, I got real kind of like pissed off about it. And so I just said, you know, to hell with this. And then I just, you know, pushed for the next about 10 miles. Um, and I was going along pretty well and then it kind of dawned on me at about 35, you know, I, I got to back off because uh, everybody that's kind of run you know, like 50 mile hard a month out of 100, you tend to run like rubbish. So, uh... That's wise to realize yeah. that not having been in this, the scene. Well, you know, <laughs> and I looked at a lot of trends like that, so I, um, I backed right off, um, and then I stopped at the next two aid stations for, you know, you know, four or five minutes, and just hung out, tried to relax, and then I was kind of running along the last seven miles, and, um, it was getting warm, and I had a, a certain backpack on that was really kind of trapping the heat. And I think it was it was over 80. It was really hot that day here. And um, 
So I was like, you know, what the hell am I doing? You know, I don't care about winning, I didn't care about times, I wanted to learn. So um, I stopped and I, I actually uh, practiced a lot of that hiking in the last okay. like four miles. Um, and I wasn't, I had no watch, I had no idea how fast I was running or anything. And um, you know, I, I was expecting people to come whipping past and they just never did. So, uh, you know, it's, it's mixed bags because I know that it, I was, before I stopped um, and like started, you know, a bit of that hiking, I was, I was probably well under eight minute pace. Um, but it's a whole different animal. So I figure if I can, you know, hold anywhere between nine and 10 minute miles for the first half, I'll be pretty happy. What is going to be your approach on race you know, tomorrow? Uh, yeah, all or nothing. All or nothing. I got, I got no middle ground. I just don't care. Yeah. You know, what have I got to prove? This is probably going to be my last race either. So, um, you know, this can be a retirement party. Um, you know, unlike the other guys that have, like, schedules, going to Europe and all that kind of stuff, I don't care. Yeah. You know, I, I want to see how tough I am. This, Like I said, this race is on my bucket list. So uh, I'm going to go out with the leaders and hang on as long as I can. You know, when they drop me, you know, I'll keep hanging on and, until I blow up. Gotcha. Um, if they drop me. Uh, and that's the thing, like, you know, you can be 100% sure I'm going to empty myself on the course and I'm going to do my best to get to the finish line. Yeah. But you're not going to attack from the front necessarily <laughs> early on. Oh, uh, no, I don't think that's smart. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm a little smarter than that. Heck, um, I think uh, if I can make, if something opens up, you know, after Hope Pass and I feel that, you know, I've got enough in me to, to push, you know, I'll push. Yeah. But I'm not scared. Um, I just want to be smart. Yeah. You know, I've, I've read every blow up story there is. I've read, you know, all the, the wins. I've, I've compared a lot of stuff because I only had a short time. You know, and um, hopefully, I got, you know, a little bit of knowledge sort of away here. Yeah. I mean, is there anything that does not, not scare you overall about the race? But what are you, is there anything you're most concerned about? And what, what is the, the unknown that has you? Well, the unknown is whether or not I can actually run for that long. That's a bloody long way. Um, I'm not really worried about you know the competition because I don't know who they are. Um, you know, there's a couple of guys um, that you know I've met along the way, and you know everybody seems to be really good. You know, they're, they're friendly, and they've really accepted me in, and and I think once you know they kind of hear it from me, they work out that I'm not trying to come in and you know make the sport look bad or do anything you know ridiculous. I want to compete, and when I can't compete, I'll try and finish. And mm -hmm. Hopefully, that's where it ends. You know, it's like I, I don't have any like you know lofty goals about. Breaking records, and, you know. Like, look at me, I'm so great. I just, just want to run. Gotcha. Yeah. And what do you think about the scene? I mean, you've now been at, you were at uh, the Silver Rush 50. You, I think you spent some other time training up here a little bit. What? A, yeah. It's, and then you were at a barbecue last night. What's, what's it like for you coming from, you know, literally being, you know, doing the European track circuit, being at the Olympics, being at the big marathons? It's uh, definitely different. Um, it's a lot more low key. It's a lot more inviting. It's, um, it just shows it. It's every man against the course every man against the distance it's not really so much about um, you know like well this is about competing against each other but you know like everybody wants everybody to do well mm -hmm. it's not um, cutthroat and I think maybe that's where the money is the factor you know these guys don't line up and they're not getting paid 50,000 you know to start the race you know everyone's paying their entry fee and um, you know everybody's you know just wanting to get to the finish and it's I don't know, it's just one of those things that it's nice. It's a step back and it, it's, it's relaxing and it's important. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything you're looking forward to most this weekend? Finishing? Um, <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's been full on. Um, work's been getting a bit crazy. And, you know, like, trying to map, you know, work in training with working and life. And, you know, I never really got to do as much training as I liked. Mm -hmm. um, I never... Uh, I never actually got to run for seven days straight, so you know there was there was some goals I wanted to do in that block, but never really got around to. But um, you know I'm, I'm fresh. That's how I look at it. Yeah. Um, so you're I think the first non-sponsored runner I've talked to. So and you work at a running store, correct? I do. I do. Uh, which store is it? Uh, Boulder Running Company in the Denver Tech Center. Gotcha. So. It's a sort of a mixed course. You got a lot of double tracks and some roads, some real mountain running. What shoes are you wearing? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I've been lucky enough that I've been able to test out a lot of yeah. shoes that uh, don't come out until next year. Um, and then I've been able to put in a little bit of, you know, a bit of input here and there for the new shoes. But I don't know, like, I think in the morning I'll just get up and I'll just grab a pair out of the bag and just go for it. Nice. I, I, I don't, you know, you can get all wish-wash about it. I'll grab what I grab. Yeah. Let's go for it.
Well, Mike, I'm glad you're up here for this year, and enjoy the course. Cheers, enjoy thanks the race. So much. Yeah. Hey, uh, this, I don't know if you get it so much, but uh, have you ever seen Mario fly the concourse? <laughs> no. <laughs> I haven't heard that one before. You've got a striking resemblance. You should, I, you should definitely watch I'll, that. I'll have to watch that. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe I shouldn't, depending on. Uh, no, you should. <laughs> it's a different thing. Nice. You look just like him. <laughs> cool. Out of it. All right, here, here. It's a yeah. bonus question. Okay, bonus. Here we go. Any bold predictions about this weekend? Oh yeah. Um, for what I know, which is very little, I would say I'd bet on Nick Clark. I think that he's uh, the most consistent runner. He's as strong as hell, and he's a uh, he's just a low key guy. You know, I I'd, I'd bet on him. Not because of any other reason, but you know, Tony's been injured. Tony hasn't finished. Uh, Tony's got a lot of, you know, he's got a lot of mind games he's got to get through. Um, you know, like, he's got, you know, one of the best trail runners in the world to pace him coming in. Yeah. Which shows me maybe he's a little desperate. I don't know. You know, like, <laughs> he's a great runner, um, you know, and he's done a lot for the sport. So I'm not, I, I'm no way knocking him. Um, but I think, you know, those two will have a good battle. Um, but I, yeah, I, I give Nick it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You know, they're even in a lot of areas. You know, they both got good-looking beards. Um, both got long hair. Um, blogs are pretty poly, positively consistent. Um, yeah, it's just going to come down to I think who's got the strength over the end. And uh, you know, Nick's Nick's been consistent for the last some years. So. Yeah. So I guess on that note, we're talking about consistency at the end. Um, you did run well at Silver Rush, but. Uh, You've got 50 miles in about, if you have a good day, about nine hours that you've never run before. Yeah. What do you... Well, to, to be honest with you, when I ran Silver Rush, there was, uh, what did they tell you, like seven and, seven and a half half hours something? Um, I think it was just under seven. Oh, seven. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that was four hours further than I've ever run. So, uh, you know, that's not too bad either. Um, uh, what's the worst that's going to happen? End up in an ambulance? <laughs> you know, like, I see that. Yeah. Like, yeah just, Let's just go for it. You know, like I've got, you know, I was saying, um, Tony's got these great pacemakers coming in. You know, what, Scott Jurek? Yeah. You know, it's, it's some fancy stuff. i got three guys that aren't even here yet, and I'm actually a little bit worried because I think one of them doesn't even know where Leville is. So uh, <laughs> I'm a little worried myself, but uh, we'll see what happens. It'll be fun one way or another. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely going to be fun. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. Uh. <laughs> That was more than one bonus question.